Thank you. It's my honor to do this. As the director of Tourism Ohio, Mary Cusick leads the state's efforts to brand and market Ohio as a compelling travel destination. Prior to her role at Tourism Ohio, Cusick spent a large part of her career at Bob Evans Farms, where she was the chief marketing officer for Bob, Bob Evans Restaurants. Most recently, she was the executive director of the Initiative for Managing Services, a center of excellence at The Ohio State University Fisher College of Business. Mary is the chair of the advisory board of directors for 31 Gifts, the third largest direct sales company in the United States and 18th worldwide. She also serves on the advisory board of the directors of Ohio-based Crimson Cup Coffee and Tea, excellent coffee by the way, a roaster and supplier of coffee across the country. She is a passionate volunteer, working with a variety of causes. She chairs the board of directors for the Southside Learning and Development Center, a high-quality preschool and early learning center. She's also involved in Action for Children and in an organization called Ruling Our Experiences, or ROX, ROCKS, an empowerment program for girls. She has the privilege of having been named the YWCA Woman of Achievement, and she's an active member of the Academy of Women of Achievement. Mary is an Ohio native and a graduate of Miami University. She lives in German Village with her husband, David, and her dog, Annie the Coonhound. Yay for hounds. Welcome, Mary Cusick. So let's go somewhere together, and that would be next Friday, the Friday after Thanksgiving. The Friday after Thanksgiving. Is that good? So here's what I'm thinking about that. Black Friday now officially launches on Thursday, right? <laughs> and those die-hard Black Friday shoppers in your family by next Friday, say, midday, because they're the ones, I'm telling you, to shop Black Friday these days, you have to be good at logistics, you have to be good at analytics, and you have to have your stuff together and be prioritized when it comes to where you're going to go and what you're going to get. So say that's all died down among those diehards in your family by, say, mid-morning on Friday. And everyone's sitting around looking at a day of leftovers, kind of lounging around, looking at TV, Football's not that great that day, and anyway, we got to get ourselves together for the big game the next day. And I think on that day, it's also easy to kind of just think, I'll take it easy because I've got one big fun family food hangover from the day before. Enough already. So here's the thing. You know, we talk about millennials and targeting them and segments and all of that in your marketing and your marketing work. So think about these segments hanging around the house. You got somebody eight months old, maybe somebody around eight, and so maybe somebody 18, everything in between, and then the 80-year-old. Now what are you going to do on the Friday after Thanksgiving? So here's what I'm thinking. Why not be an accidental tourist? Do you remember the film and the award-winning book by Ann Tyler? It was 1989. And the accidental tourist had to do with someone who he wrote guidebooks. For travel. And the thing though was he never really took time to fully experience and enjoy that which he wrote about and all of the surprising discoveries in life that could come his way just when you don't expect them can be a very rich experience. So here's what I'm thinking. Your family, you can become a hero or a shero in your household by organizing an outing on the Friday after Thanksgiving that's not shopping. Okay, it's kind of radical. I know, but think about it. So say we are in this town and friends and family are visiting you from other places. So you might start, even though at the North Market right here in town, it's an optional day for some of the vendors because you've got to remember there's little micro businesses, right? And most of them own and operate their own space. And so the day after Thanksgiving, they're pretty depleted in every way. The shopping just before and the big day. But I think you could pretty well feel good about, you know, the waffle place and pistachio vera and getting coffee. And so there's lots of good going on. Now, the other good thing going on there is that your range of family you might have a decent sized group, so everybody's going to get happy, find something they like, and I don't know about you, but that makes a big difference in the quality of the outing. So as you think about that, and then Deb, who introduced me, maybe next, maybe you divide and conquer. Maybe if people hadn't been to the Wexner Center yet to see um, Transfigurations, you might have a group that goes that way. 
And then you might have a group that goes the Coast Highway because they're open, each of those on those days. And again, at least you're moving, right? And you're, you're doing something other than talking politics and religion among your family members one more day. So you're out and about. I think after that, probably coming home and maybe eating some of those leftovers because they are kind of fun and we all have traditions around those before you head out to Blue Jackets get because they have great packages and it's a lot of fun and it'll be a warm up for the next day. And anyway, they need our support, right? <laughs> they won again. So all of those things that I just described are big fun. And it could be a big new tradition. Trish talked about traditions and families. It could be a new tradition in your family. But here's what I want to tell you. It's also big business, cumulatively for Ohio. We brought these little sheets that are on your table. But when you think about segments like restaurants and going out to eat or visiting the North Market, sports, um, the Blue Jackets tickets that you would purchase, even those at Ohio State, museums, cultural venues. The raffle here today is a great example of the accidental tourist and going exploring in your own hometown and attractions, <clears throat> even lodging. You will be surprised to know if this doesn't happen to your family. When we did the research, people, when family comes to town, they don't all stay with other family. They get hotel rooms. Just in case yours didn't know that, it might be something <laughs> worth sharing. And it's really good for the economy, as you can see here. So today what I thought I'd do is give you some headlines and, and highlights as it pertains to economic impact for tourism in Ohio, as well as a little bit of an inside look at some of the kinds of things that, working, that we're working on doing to support that, that segment of um, business in Ohio. Just as this um, says on the sheet, it's a $38 billion spend on an annual basis in Ohio. Those numbers relate to 2013. And I know you hear about economic impacts of LeBron James coming back and here in Columbus and on, this, on, a, on a statewide level. What I can tell those segments that I just mentioned, <clears throat> those all play into overall tourism revenue in the state on an annual basis. It's significant. $38 billion. It's bigger than our competitive and peer states in this region. Even more so when you start to think about the number of jobs that are related to that $38 billion, 405,000 of them. Now these are full-time jobs, like the, ones I, the one I had at Bob Evans. It's a part-time job because I'm a single mom and those hours work great for me. Maybe it's a seasonal job where I have a chance to help pay my college tuition. So those are meaningful jobs. And when you, has anybody seen any of the advertising we did this summer called Too Much Fun for Just One Day? Too Much Fun for Just One Day was built on the insight that when someone spends the night in Ohio, so it could be me going to Cleveland for a weekend or someone in Cincinnati coming here, as well as international guests and guests from other states. 195 million visits are attributable to that 38 billion dollar spend. Of those, 37 million spend the night. That's about the population of California. So it's like inviting them all over for one night, sending them home. <laughs> That's all it would take. But what happens is when someone spends the night, they spend about $335 per person per day versus the 110 that gets spent on a day trip. So the Friday after Thanksgiving is a really good thing. If you look at the number of people on your outing, it's good for the economy. I used to tell my husband that when I shopped, but I didn't know it was that true. Because <laughs> retail plays into that segment as well. <clears throat> you may have heard along the way, um, the governor, when I came to Tourism Ohio about a year ago, you could hear, I have never worked in the public sector before. So this is an education and an opportunity for me, and I really want to do the right thing. And one of the things that the governor is adamant about was making Ohio cool and presenting Ohio as cool as it is. Now, every single one of you in here know you cannot make something cool, right? It has to be cool. Well, the great thing about Ohio is that, in fact, it is cool, and it is authentic. So if you think about the trend of local, and then you think about the trend of craft brews, and then you think about agriculture in Ohio, and you think about more agriculture growing hops, that is very authentic here in Ohio, and it's based on our roots. Too much fun for just one day is transactional. 
hi from Hocking Hills, hi from Lake Erie, hi, 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 and that's all good. But it's very transactional to convince you there's a lot to do here. If there's a lot to do here, you should stay here. <clears throat> and there is nothing wrong with targeting that segment. What we haven't done is tell you a story. We, those are functional benefits, things you can do, stay all night. We haven't told the emotional story. So I know you've, if you've seen our advertising, then I know who else you've seen advertised in this market. That'd be Michigan. Like it, love it, or leave it. Now, I know some of you vacation up there, too. I know you do. Like it, love it, or leave it. They've done a great job telling the emotional story. And they did it beginning almost 10 years ago. And they did it starting very small. And they're doing it in a way they didn't know that Detroit would vaporize and so would Flint as they did those campaigns. But they turned our head toward all those great things that are uniquely presented as only being available in Michigan. So what we're going to do here in Ohio, we're going to create that compelling story. And we're going to create awareness that as Ohio is a place to come because of its unique gems, these experiences here that you can't get just anywhere else. And we're going to tell it enough that we can become viable in someone's consideration set when they're thinking about where to spend some of their discretionary money and their free time. Because we have an opportunity. People tell me, Mary, it's going to be really hard. It'll be too hard. You can't really do it because it's so diverse. Well, it is diverse here, right? I mean, it's not about one ocean, and it's not about one forest, and it's not about one mountain range. If you look at the opportunity we have with three major markets the size of that, which Cleveland, Columbus, and Cincinnati are, just for starters, if you think about the amount of dollars they spend and experience Columbus spends, it'll rival what we have on a statewide basis to spend. The population that we have in this state the accessibility to the state, and we know that because of those things, people tell us we're a great value. So there are lots of things that work in our favor. What we haven't done is take the opportunity to tell our story in a way that is uniquely and distinctly Ohio. The other thing we know, and it is a real benefit of taking your family on a new Friday tradition, the single most reason people come here is because you recommend that they do. So whether it's friends or family, or it's, or it's a convention that ends up coming here, our own residents recommending the experiences that we have here in Ohio, it's the number one driver of what gets them here. So when we think about what we can do to support that at Tourism Ohio, we can't control the experience. The Boathouse controls the experience. COSI controls the experience. I have no, and that is very different than my former life. We had a lot of sway over what the actual experience would be. We can't, at the state of Ohio, control any of that. But what we can do is to be able to be poised and ready to leverage that, which we do have, which are some of state tax dollars. There's a recent funding model. It was passed in 2012. I wasn't here for it, but it's smart. And the reason it was smart was because instead of having going to the state legislature and starting from scratch, with a budget for tourism, any of you who do marketing, to have to plan your marketing a year and a half ahead, and I'm not just saying round numbers, I'm saying plans, that's a tough place to be, right? It's a little hard to be nimble in the marketplace, given at what might come at you, at how fast and when. At least now, because Tourism Ohio is funded with a um, percentage of state sales tax revenue in the segments that I've described from um, retail, hotels, lodging, hotels and lodging being very much the biggest, highest weighted ones. That provides consistent funding, up to $10 million a year, as long as the state sales tax revenues in those segments have at least equaled, and then after they do that, the first $10 million funds Tourism Ohio. So that is lucky. Whoever did that, they are smart, and there are industry leaders like the COSIs and our partners throughout the state who, who did that. What I want to be able to do is invest those dollars in a really smart way. So we're finishing a strategic plan, and that will be our guide, right? It's very hard to know where you're going if there's not a strategy to take you there and upon which you build your marketing communications plans, your staffing plans, your investment plans. That's number one. And that will be done um, and signed off on. It'll be done by the end of the year. We worked with our Tourism Ohio Advisory Board, two of whom the leaders are from right here in Ohio, Dan Sullivan, 
who's um, chairs who runs the memorial tournament is our board chair and Brian Ross from Experience Columbus is also on the Tourism Higher Advisory Board. So we're very lucky to have uh, professionals of their caliber who are counselors for me to help guide me through the territory. We have um, RFPs, which I can't even believe I'm standing in front of like a couple hundred people talking about RFPs and DAS and DSAs and OITs. And it's like this foreign language, right, of acronyms. But here's what I want you to know. We're going to build a new website. So we're evaluating how we're going to do with that. And we need to do a new one from scratch, right, that can be very trans transactional, that we can measure so that when we're out advertising and messaging um, to come to Ohio, we can drive people to that website. We're also going to do a, ver uh, a formal and fresh review of our marketing communications, our advertising partner, um, the research that we do, all of that. So we're spending the right money on the right things. And I do believe, as we begin to forecast and project what we believe that this can do for us, the economic headwinds are in our favor, right? Fuel prices are, are important um, in terms of travel in this region. Most of our travelers come by automobile. We are very accessible. The population of about 60% of this country is within a day's drive or less. So we have lots and lots of opportunities. So I'm excited to be able to inform and to influence that spend for Tourism Ohio beginning in 2015. That's go fast. That's go fast from today to be able to do that by late spring um, this coming year. But we are committed to it, and the administration and the governor has been really supportive because people do see the economic impact and the jobs that are related to this. So what I'm hoping that by being an accidental tourist, what you can help me do is explore Ohio. Don't take her for granted. I'm telling you, there's lots of interesting things happening that are very tourism worthy in this state. Experience something new and excite and encourage your friends and family. Among the most visited right here in Central Ohio, in addition to COSI, the Ohio State University, our zoo, German Village, around the state that grows to include Lake Erie, Amish country, Hocking Hills. The amusement parks are something Ohio is really known for. We are very family friendly and I've already mentioned accessible. So, when you read about economic impact of tourism, and, and, and you know, everybody does an economic impact study, right? But I want you to know that the formulas that your, your tourism partners in the state are using are highly regarded. They are using vendors and firms who have a great deal of experience in this space. It's a snapshot in time. And it gives us an indicator of all that which we are supporting in terms of the activity in the space is making a difference. So whether it's the all-star game that's coming up for hockey here in January, right here in Ohio, the Major League Baseball is having their all-star game in Cincinnati next summer when LeBron comes back to Cleveland. And right here with Experience Columbus, it's just under $9 billion of the $38 billion that I told you about earlier. So it's a, it's a reflection of the spend. It's a weighting against, because you might say, Mary, every time I go out to eat, am I counted as a tourist? No, but there's a weighting based on the visits. And, and it's, I, don't, I can't even go into every ounce of the detail with you, but trust me, it is a validated approach to the research and the understanding on that spend. So, so many of you here I know, I have volunteered with you, I have worked with you along the way, and most importantly, I live with you right here in Central Ohio. Um, you are highly regarded and respected individuals yourselves, you are opinion leaders in our community, and Larry Anderson, thanks for the blessing, because I feel a lot of commitment to you to be able to deliver on this work that we've been challenged with and these public dollars that we have to invest for the good of Ohio. So what I'm really hoping that as I have that privilege and opportunity to do that for Ohio, and trust me, I'm competitive. We are, I intend to do it every bit as well as someone like Michigan has done it. They're tiny compared with us. The, the economic upside that we have is great. And um, really, I, I'm looking forward to to putting messaging out there that's going to work equally as hard in making Ohio safe for others to come visit while our markets and our attractions then have more reach and strength of message because people haven't discounted Ohio. Because I don't know about you, it's very hard to buy a brand that I don't know anything about and that I don't think is for me. So I intend to help make that come true. I'm hoping you'll join me and continue to be an accidental tourist and um, right here in your own hometown. So with that, 
thank you so much for thinking to include me, watch my progress, and um, root for me because I really want to do the right things for the good of Ohio and, and all that we have to offer. So thanks very much. What kind of tie-in, um, Mary, of your effort with the city of Columbus, with the city of Cincinnati, with the city of Cleveland? Because uh, Columbus has you know, so much good going for it, and uh, just uh, share with us how you're going to work the, that detail out. So I think we have a great opportunity to partner more closely than even we have in the past. Each of those markets, and let's just mention Cincinnati, Cleveland, and Columbus, each of them are evaluated, right, and their uh, bed tax and different mixes of how they are locally funded. So their first obligation is, in fact, to Cleveland and is, in fact, to Columbus and Central Ohio and is, in fact, to Cincinnati. But what I can tell you, I am feeling really good about the fact that we've all been to the table. We have a couple of um, opportunities in the near term to actually sit down and roll up our sleeves and talk about how we can do that better. Because when I say for the good of Ohio, they're thinking for the good of Cleveland and Columbus and Cincinnati because they're very competitive. But what I can tell you, there's the spirit, and some of you may have read about it, called cooperation along the way, right? So because I win doesn't mean you lose. So in ultimately, I do believe that if something's right for Columbus, it might not be right for Cincinnati or Cleveland and vice versa in many cases. So those opportunities we want to work to more fully identify and to to leverage um, our strength as a state more powerfully. What are the biggest draws for out-of-state tourists in Ohio? So, you know, when it comes to the biggest draws for out-of-state tourists, the um, the the Ohio State University, the out of doors, the zoos, the amusement parks have been the biggest draws. So I look again at those opportunities to say how do you collectively present them because it's it's the experience of coming here that I think can be unique and distinctive in the way we frame and tell the story. We don't tell a story about why our zoos are great, or we don't tell the story of why the outdoors in Ohio is really worth spending your time in. We are more transactionally as that we have a kayak and a, and a boat, and we have a lake and a fishing pole, and you should come. So um, those places in Columbus that are mentioned perform strongly on a statewide basis as well. They're among the top 10. I don't know out of state as much because most of our visits are driven by us visiting one another, but I do believe this part of the strategic plan we're doing, that will be a metric we are pulling out so that we can see how our money is really working to bring incremental business into the state, not just building upon that which we have. Mm -hmm. Do you see um, as part of the plan a priority to include organizations that are attractions into the messaging and the marketing. I know we don't talk about the state up north, but how they've used their messaging, not just externally, but it seems like they've also brought it in to their organizations that are attractions kind of using that as part of the brand. Do you imagine that being a priority? I can imagine that. The question is about how we integrate attractions, specific attractions, right, into a campaign that is more emotional and overall driven. So here's what I know, because any of you, right, if you're going to enter the space and compete, you got to do your homework and know the competitive set. So in doing that, what we do know about a place like Michigan, to use in this example, when they first launched that Pure Michigan campaign, they did it, they spent most of the money in state. And they did that because what it did was the research told them it created so much pride among those who live in the state that they were then willing to recommend the state to others. Then they began to build it, and they, that camp campaign began in 2006, began to build it out of state. Now their number one measurement that they use is out of state traffic, right? So how many are coming from out of state and how productive their out of state marketing dollars are. What they've also done is it used to be pure Michigan, big billboard, see it on TV. Now what they do is you'll see there's Dearborn Village or there would be the city of Ann Arbor. So what they've done is, is turn that kind of into a co-op where their partners can participate, advertise in a much more specific and broader way, and it adds depth to their campaign. So I would see that evolving. The very first go or two of that might be to establish the messaging and establish the campaign and then be able to grow co-op so that our smaller partners in attraction, they had a way to play. 
what role does politics play in this? As in, you know, you've got a governor now who's behind you and pushing this forward. You're setting up a strategic plan for a, a goal of what you're looking at. It needs to have a shelf life. I don't know whether you're thinking 10 years or, or what, you know, how much you're thinking. But to what degree do politics and terms and elections impact the strategic plan that you're... So Trisha's question is about politics and planning and how do you, you know, make promises that you surely want to keep. So here's what I know. Here's what I know about that. Great brands are built over time, not overnight. And how many of you can think of a slogan that was used for tourism in Ohio? Just say it if you can think of one. Ohio, the heart of it all. That branding lasted for 16 years. It crossed three different administrations. So one of my goals would be to make the work that we're doing here so powerful that it would be politically crazy to stop doing it because it's working. And now that we have, we're aligned around the kind of metrics that you asked about, we're going to be, the legislature can evaluate whether or not it's working. And it should be pretty clear whether or not it's working. And if it's not working, probably it's time for change. Won't be easy, though. Channel good energy. <laughs> uh, can you tie this into the youth of our state? What I'm thinking about, can you tie in the arts in Columbus and the theater and the ballet and, 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 and the museums and all and say, you know, invite for the kids as they are growing up, invite, you know, spend some money on inviting grandma and grandpa to come in from, from Indianapolis or Detroit or whatever. Tie that in to the youth of our society so that all of our kids appreciate, as was mentioned by Steve here, the kids in Europe appreciate what the arts have to say because they, they've grown up with that. They're smaller communities. Tie that in to our youth so every child in our community has a chance to be exposed to that opportunity through the effort of the state of Ohio and the city of Columbus in getting those kids involved in going to the theater, hearing the ballet, hearing the symphony, going to the museum, that kind of thing. So here's the great thing that I think about that. So part of what we do plays into the quality of life in the state. So that even as people want to stay here and work here, it's relevant to them. So I think the observation about young people, we know young people as we think of them as marketers, millennials, right? Born in, say, 84 and after that era. They're really important, and it's a really big segment. And they'll be really powerful in terms of what happens. We also know, you know, when people say, like, Ohio needs to be cool. Anybody go to, like, the, uh, you know, Crafting Outlaw show? <laughs> Bet you didn't. Go shopping in the short north. All things Ohio are cool because that age group so appreciates their roots and where they're from and the whole local aspect. So I think, Larry, to have an opportunity to do that even more broadly, as you say, I mean, it's pretty easy here to get just so overwhelmed by sports, which we're really known for sports, that people run out of money or don't turn their heads further than sports. So I think we have lots of opportunities, and that's where it's a good example of the diversity working in our favor rather than against us. It was, I use the example, Malcolm Gladwell just wrote another book, David and Goliath, and it's kind of like, you know, the little guy and the big guy. But it's also take something that's a seeming disadvantage, turn it into a competitive advantage. So that would be, that would play right into that. I, th I, I feel like here's my hat, here's your coat, what's your worry got? <laughs> Mary, thank you very much, and that was interesting, and I appreciate it. This is a gift from Argo and Lini Jewelers for coming and speaking to us. Should, do I, are you making me put this on my ethics form? <laughs> I have one, you know. <laughs> That's I may, your ethics. I will <laughs> share this with many. Okay, sure. thank you so much. Yes, yes, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. That was our papa. The meeting is adjourned.